to, to be grow be part of a fable, for example. But nevertheless, the fable don't make sense because a couple of characters you said are, this, are, are different characters in the fable have exactly the same role to play. That would be a case in point. This is an example of a conflict that we were talking about here. Yeah, time. it is. It is a conflict situation. Sure. And the, the author would then have to somehow resolve it. Um, if you stick to that, what happens? If you stick to that, what happens is that we go into the other thing that the uh, uh, the theory is about, I guess, or the, or the language is about. We say, well, really, of course, he's talking about <coughs> P and a couple of kinds of T. Uh, and a couple of kinds of Q dash. And as it were, T has evaporated into a pair of components, Q dash dash, and R. Uh, and T is not equal to T primed, and is not equal to T prime primed. Uh, nor is Q equal to Q primed, and it is not equal to Q prime primed. But it is true that they're in one to one correspondence. So I indicate that by a special connective, which is the beginning of a kind of analogy relation it is I'm looking at in this sense of context at least a couple of different universes in one of which T primed and Q prime make sense about an object and another of which T prime prime and Q prime prime make sense about a kind of an object and let me call these universes by labeling the boundaries of them X, E, Y. Doesn't matter what, we can label them one and two or something or whatever you want. Now, therefore, one is, is working here with one one correspondence with isomorphisms, or if you prefer to be more thoroughly mathematical about it, as a matter of fact, you're looking at the functors between the morphisms of categories. Uh, categories of objects such as groups, rings, trees, etc. Uh, and the universes are the categories and the functors are those things that relate them. The morphisms are the relations inside. Uh, I don't want to <coughs> particularly use this jargon. If it's familiar to you, it's worth using. If you like categories and uh, category theory, topology and things, that's fine. If you don't, it's a nuisance and gets in the way. Uh, I mean, strictly, however, to ease the minds of those of you who may be, be, be sort of mathematicians, or algebraic topologists, or whatever, uh, that is how I would have to represent the situation. I'm calling it an isomorphism because, for all practical purposes, it's easier from the point of view of expounding the theory. I know that strictly it is indeed a uh, faithful bijective functor between categories. I've disallowed ambiguity at the level of processing, so it's always able to, we're always able to process these statements. And if you like, golden rule is that there exists for any L sub P expression, which is built up, a unique unfoldment, a unique way of adding it out from each, sorry, not a unique, apologies. There exists a way of adding it out, a unique way, it frequently isn't unique. Uh, and there is a way for every topic of so doing this. And the complete unfoldment will contain all of the terms in any given universe or given universe of discourse context. Okay? Yeah. May it come to me, or it's mine, it's reversible figure to figure ground. Yeah. Ah, oh, the two reverse ones. This is the Necker cube, yeah. Okay. This is the Necker cube sticking in and sticking out. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not at all. No, no. This, uh, this, uh, this is the simple expression would be. I mean, you choose a beautiful example, and it's so much nicer if people choose examples. 
because we all feel comfortable with them. Th this does represent, for example, a nega cube. Which one? Uh, this one. Yeah. No, I this one. Does. one does that. Does. Well, it would do, excepting that you see here you coalesce the nega cube, and you haven't admitted that it's an illusory figure. Here you have got this cube drawn on a sheet of paper, and here it is sticking in with a couple of its sides, the rest being cube representation. Uh, it's a different cube representation, however, to stick it in and a sticking out cube. So this is in and this is out. And in and out are different images. I mean, the, the figure, as you know better than I do, oscillates in perception, like many of these things do. And uh, although I say it's ambiguous, if you like, that contains the ambiguity, and this contains the perceptual resolution of the ambiguity. Because surely just what you're doing is to see a cube sticking in on one occasion, sticking out on the next. And maybe you see an about with them both, but realize that either could be done, but actually they'd be different perceptual objects. Am I being clear now, or no? Yeah, I, it seems to me that you have disallowed uh, the one that you've double X and taken an alternative uh, representation of it. Is it just for formalization? It is important because it exhibits to the author, and certainly to the machinery, uh, what may be transparent in this very simple case, I would, I would agree, but in general is not transparent at all. I mean, supposing I take a whole focus podokery like this complicated mesh I had over here, which is quite legal, and uh, in another part of the engine, I am going on with about a, a distinct universe, because it, it's, it, I, I've started it, and this universe contains quite different terms, like, for example, this might contain alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon, pi, theta, lambda. It was Greek letters for that universe, all right? It's just a lexicographic naming. And suddenly you decide either that, let's say, <coughs> S and delta are, are the same topic, or you decide, well, no, Lord, um, that can be linked on by adding the term to. Well, now, you don't know, I don't know, a priori, whether that's going to bifurcate or not. <laughs> it's, um, but there's a perfectly legitimate thing to do. You've now created one universe out of a couple of them, either as an author or a doer. And I did stress last meeting that anything that could be authored in the author language of LP can be also encoded into LP from the performance of experts or even, even people who aren't experts uh, in a given context, such as the team decision system, which is the ARI system, where we do it, I'll show you some pictures of it, or uh, in Hunks, which was the one we demonstrated, or, or as, a, as, a, as, a, as an environment, as a context, which is an anti-submarine warfare game. Does the fair generalization say that you can only intersect your mesh on one element? It isn't quite, because uh, you can, in fact, intersect it on several. Um, I mean, I could give you a case, for example, of this sort, which has to be dealt with, but is dealt with in a different way. I'm not sure how I can get, get round to it today. But supposing that I had done... Uh, where is this? We had this going around Q, and not I'll scribble that line out for a moment. I could have done that. And marginally, that would be stable. It's a darn nearly unstable construction. And because... What do you mean You have added enough distinction to make P, S, T, T, Q, R. And... Oh, wait a minute, what have I done? Yeah, I wanted to redraw it. I, I can't see what you mean. That's all right. What is that then? P, S, T, Q, and T, Q, R? P, S, T, Q, and T, Q, R. T, uh, Q, R, yeah. That's done nearly unstable, but not quite. How does it do that? Uh, 
It's Geneva, it's Geneva because of the, uh, it's Geneva, but it's not quite. Sorry, oh, wait, is that wrong? I haven't explained what Geneva means, but go ahead. Uh, no. Well, 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 it does, it's got, it's, this has a certain ambiguity in it, but the difference is as follows, that in this case you can take the relations, which are collective relations, and although they have an ambiguity, they're just redeemed from that because one is a relation of three terms and one is a relation of four terms. And that is why the addicity or the number of terms in the relation redeems it, just. But uh, if you like to play around with those unstable things, they're, they're very interesting, incidentally. If you like to play around those things, you can do. As a matter of fact, they have to be mechanically dealt with in a slightly different way uh, when they're, they're processed. But this case is unequivocally one where you've lost distinction, and you've got your naked cube case. And you don't mean a, a value, you don't need T and F or anything. You have an oscillating value um, as well, which is, is perfectly true. But to obtain that, you need to represent it in this manner. And um, now, the, the general rule of acceptance, I'm sorry, general rule of legitimacy, let's say, for any proposed L sub P expression, um, so the way of telling whether or not, for example, this is a, this elaborate thing up here, This elaborate sort of uh, letter gumbo up here is um, a oh lord of the wrong one. Uh, apologies. To apologize, the letter gumbo up here with all the Greek and Latin letters on it uh, is a legitimate construction or not is to say that there must be a way of unfolding it. So, just to make sure what I mean by an unfoldment or a pruning, uh, as it's called in this case, I will take the simple example of a perfectly stable form which is distributive and I'll take a very simple one because it's easy to draw frankly and um, this has an alternative representation as a process <coughs> okay and they all do some more difficult to notate, notate than others, they all do. Uh, the representation is logically unique, though notationally not unique. In this case, it is both. So in general, you'll get notationally, uh, notationally different forms which are logically speaking equivalent, or proto-logically speaking equivalent. So, for example, if I prune this from T, I get a uh, not a tree, but I get a structure which says that T can be obtained from P and Q. And using another arrowhead point there, that T can be obtained from... Would somebody give me a 10-minute Q, please, before R and S? If I take it from P, for example, I see that I can obtain that from T and from Q that T, in turn, can be obtained from R and from S, and so on. Can't you get Q also? Yes. But if you linearize it or unfold it from P, let me put it from T here, topic T, and this is from topic B. And I can do the same thing for all of the topics in that. It's got, it's surrounded by a complete envelope. In other words, this envelope here surrounds the whole thing. And therefore, any unfoldment will contain all of the topics. Now, in those constructions, which I can interpret as 
learning strategies or classes of learning strategies, how to learn about T, or action strategies, how to achieve T. What this one does in the case of T is give a couple <coughs> of specific possibilities, alternatives. Uh, well, not just the alternatives, there are just are two of them um, that I can get T's by using P's and Q's, or I can get T's by doing P's and Q's, or I can learn T's by learning P's and Q's. Or alternatively, I can, or as well, if I like, I can learn T's by R's and S's. And uh, that is equally good, or I can do T's by using method R, method S, or whatever. Now, in this case, I can get a P from a T and a Q, but to get a T, I've got to R and S. Yeah. Ten. Ten, okay. So, these are sort of basic operations in the calculus, and those are very, very basic operations. And I probably won't have a chance to go into the whole lot, because it's just too much. And I want to leave a little time to show some view graphs, and also a little time to compare uh, this kind of representation with the several varieties of semantic mesh which have dated uh, from the past and are perhaps epitomized, brought to the height by Minsky's frame notion and its extensions. And uh, the um, expert systems, which are inclined to go along with them, uh, the first of which was due to Oliver Selfridge, which was called Paramount, para, uh, Pandemonium, a Paradigm for Learning. And it was printed in 58, and actually implemented in 58. But nowadays, expert systems are more like little experts in Pandemonium, and Pandemonium is a perfectly good one. So the original expert system was actually not due to the expert system guys around these days, though they contributed a great deal to the theory and to the practice, but uh, the first one was Oliver's, I think. He yeah, just didn't call it an expert system. It was, uh, exactly such a thing. And um, the demons were, of course, the experts, like little actors in an actor-type program. <laughs> and I'd like to show another sort of uh, construction you might wish to make. And um, supposing you had down here T, T, Q, uh, R, S, V, and we head on here L, K. Okay, this is just standing for different topics. And supposing you came along and announced something like U topic here, another one, and said, well, you Now, there's something funny about that. As you try to do that operation to it, you come up against a boundary from you, and get you, this boundary, and you know, it's the simplest of a whole collection of them, except in the one of these. Um, the, um, so what indeed happens is this, that you say, all right, I've got to create new topics, which I'm going to label with Greek letters, and I'm going to call those topics alpha, pointing to that whole lot there, and beta, pointing to that whole lot there, and you, pointing to that whole lot there, and actually, they are in uh, some sort of other universe, namely a universe of generalization. And in fact, um, this universe of generalization, if you call this a mesh omega zero, this is, if you like, omega zero one, not omega zero two and this thing is omega super one 
Uh, that is a, a generalization form, and it's valid, actually, insofar as it induces analogies. Analogy-like relations, or functor-like relations, between its parts. So, a great deal of the, great number of the operations of conversation, of, of uh, L sub P, are concerned not only with uh, things, simple things like pruning, but with doing more about the potential analogies that exist here between topics in different universes about which we know that they are one-to-one -one corresponding but different and to spell out in particular what the differences are. Uh, another part is and to extract information by genuine questioning rather than just by printing question marks in order to find out, well, if that's the case, friend, because you stuck to that, then you've got to tell me it is a Necker cube, as in fact you did. Uh, and that's fine. The, the, the relation between T dashed and Q dashed and T dashed dashed and Q dashed dashed is, is that their face is in sticking and out sticking of a Necker cube. Okay? And in this case, you have, in some sense, to give a set of exemplars to justify the analogy. And I don't really want to go into this today. It's a part of the sort of technique, and it, it is a technical issue only. You have to create a universe of values for these things down here, um, which is just to say, as a matter of fact, that you are how you have got processes. Now, um, let me see what I want to do now is probably to go into a little bit more of the basics, just a little bit, not much. And I want to deal with the following things. Thank you. It's all right, I think. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, ladies, to use a swear in, in front of you. <laughs> I do apologize. It's, it's bad manners. I'm sorry. It's falling. Um, the, uh, I want to talk about one or two things, like the status of a topic. Um, why can't a topic T work? It could, providing, if and only if, there was a model. That, indeed, T was not... ...that act. Uh, now, it happens that there is now there are a pair of operations which are called condense and the operation expand which have the following effect. Condense has the effect, and is applied in a mandatory fashion, of creating a generalization up here at the price of establishing analogies between this universe and the values or exemplars of those beneath. Expand has the property of going through a mesh such as this, so that if I prune this from you, I would find alpha and beta. If I did a prune expand, I would find u, alpha, and attach the boundary called alpha in a world called alpha. Uh, I would find t, q, p, l, k, distributive or related. And those are things that could be done. Likewise, I find beta attached to a world containing r, b, and s, which could be done. And I'd have the option there of pruning under any of the terms in the collection. OK? So I would get, as a result of my pruning, not just a topic, but a mesh of topics. Uh, <coughs> which is the same thing, really, as saying I have a model attached to this. Now, in other words, this could be better represented, this picture here could be better represented as the expansion 
the possibility of expansion to executable or process form. It's not something that has to be done on the spot by an author or even by an expert. You may not really know what you're doing, even an expert may not in a crisis type situation, for example. Um, but you have to let, you know, after the results of this unfortunate thing, uh, or after you've decided as an author to ruminate that you'd like to give exemplars or whatever of, of the model, then you can do that. And there's no order in it, there is simply a necessity in this process uh, that the mesh is not called a complete mesh unless this can be done. Um, the operation expand is therefore the operation of, if you like, the converse of condensing. Condense is the thing that creates generalizations. Expand is the thing that unfolds through generalizations into uh, the particulars and the values or exemplars of the particulars under the generalization. Uh, the other operation which is useful is distinguish, well, sorry, is essential, which is the way of finding out about the distinction in the Necker cube, that indeed that previously ambiguous form, which has been disambiguated, because you said you really meant it, is a Necker cube rather than some other optical illusion or whatever. Uh, then there is an operation saturate, which is a provocative operation. If you assert a coherence, and I don't think I've got one to draw out here, which uh, I, I, I can easily draw one out, but it's going to take ages. Uh, it's nearly always possible to assert more coherences. Um, these are proposed to the author, or for that matter, to the user. So the user can always reject these proposals, temporarily or permanently. But they are possible coherences, which would not destroy the asserted distinction, which are possible constructions the author may not have put in, but could be put in. So it is provocative in the sense that it provides a flow of proposed constructions, which would be legitimate, and follow that minimal think of the primary operations of L sub T, would you think, Paul, I've covered the majority of them. Uh, maybe we could have just a look at a few examples. I'm going to show you here on these view graphs, which have been kindly made. I don't know where they go, but um, I think I'd say view graphs a little later, because these machines that I made make such a noise that it's almost impossible to hear anybody. I get one. Oh, we've got this fancy contraption. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. And the. Um, okay, are we, are we functioning? We're on. The other way. Hello. Oh, well. Just rotate it. Just ro rotate the whole. Excuse me. Um, there we are. That was. Um, that was a. Oh, well, sorry. Did you get a shock? Yeah, yeah, fine. And so, uh, that was the one of the first implementations of Thought Sticker as a, a room in which authoring was done. And in fact, is the implementation of Thought Sticker on which uh, meshes, command meshes for TDS were produced. Uh, this was later augmented to be four Tektronix tubes instead of one, cycling through the various proposals made and the various prunings or unfoldments exhibited to an author when a statement is made to see, to show its legitimacy. In other words, 
the author is asked to agree to all of these. And the unfoldments were presented on these tubes, and naturally I won't get four of them on at once. The input, instead of being written, was on a board up here, which contained a layover on which you could draw these diagrams, and you can see some drawn out there, with a micro switch behind the topics so that you could label the topics and touch them and point at them, and clusters of four LEDs around each. This is a 64-way board, a very small installation because typically meshes contain some several hundred or even thousand topics. It's subsistent, not consistent. That's to say, you can't get a consistent representation of the Necker cube in the strict sense of the word because you can't apply proof theory to it because it exists. You can, however, get a subsystem, say. In other words, you can get that which is true in one particular universe and that which is true in another particular universe. So are you saying we've eliminated any uh, contradictions in the universe? Well, I like to call them contradictions, but they're really contradictions due to the fact that there ought to be more universes, or due to the fact you've been speaking about... Now, um, as I say, there needn't to be to a mesh. It has to be, in a complete mesh, executable. Since a mesh is very well statements about the beliefs and the actions of the commander, and commonly does, the nature of vehicles, resources, uh, cost, uh, firepower, power, everything. All very different subjects. Very, very different universes, opinions, public opinion, public opinion of the, uh, the populace and so on. These are all morale, typical ones, leadership qualities of one kind or another. They're not the same they may or may not have a formal truth value, but they certainly have a coherence value. And they certainly have a distinction value, they're certainly executable as, as processes, or they consequence as executable as processes. But uh, if they could have truth value, but if they did, these truth values would manifestly be in different universes. You can't talk about so many feet or meters of. Uh, of and it's crazy to do so. What is happening actually is that most people, the, the guys at Georgia Tech, uh, uh, in the AI, uh, to look for consistency because they make this distinction that knowledge is something which has a truth value. Whereas belief is not. And then they get into awful trouble when they have to express belief. To express beliefs or opinions or thoughts or things about leadership or morale. Now, I take the reverse point of view. I represent not knowledge, if you like, but knowable. Called topics, which are distinct and are coherent with one another, and uh, they perform unfoldments and so on, and these can have a, have a coherence value, and they do have a process attached, they can be, the public concepts may be applied, or processes may be executed in a complete mesh, but I don't require that they have a truth value in a very narrow sense of either a, a you know, a Boolean or probabilistic truth value, in the sense of the coherence truth value, yes, they do have that. Uh, this allows, of course, for the uniform representation and manipulation of both beliefs and knowledge in one sense of the word. I would tend to, uh, as an epistemologist, I would tend to say that I tend to think of, uh, of knowledge as consisting in shared concepts uh, rather than in consisting of things that can be assigned values T and F. Though indeed it is perfectly true that many, you know, many consensual uh, systems do have in part or in whole the value of T or F or 
probable or not. Can you ask it in a slightly different way? Some of the expert systems that explain to us is that when they're developed, you cannot guarantee the system will not make an error or recognize an error by an expert. Mm -hmm. You develop an expert system or develop a mesh, and you say that it's not, it will not make, and I'm assuming you've got sufficient confidence that you can have to do that, yeah. that you will not get something out that can be recognized the only get anything not coherent with. Uh, whether it constitutes an error or not, I would very much hesitate to say, because error depends upon the kind of criteria you're using. And I think these people are unduly, um, uh, unduly restrictive in talking perhaps about errors, because I would, well, you, you say, I mean, let, just let me use a, uh, an idea here. Uh, I give you as a kiddie, you're know, not a kiddie, but where you're a youngster, uh, I give you um, two times four equals as a question. Now, if I'm in school and I put the answer down eight, I'm called right. Okay? Frame put down is an example of multiplies over integers, which I think I would do. Um, I'm in error. I'm in error according to the canons of a certain body of opinion called the syllabus. Uh, now, surely a decent teacher will pick that up and say, well, okay, <laughs> so you have to give a in this case, uh, an integer as a, as a reply, and um, what you're required to do is the operation of ordinary arithmetic multiplication, not, for example, in a product of this. And uh, the, um, but on the other hand, it would be an error according to that. Now, of course, you can't guarantee errors of that sort. They didn't occur. I mean, there is no way in real life of guaranteeing them. What you can guarantee with these meshes is coherence providing the mesh is well enough developed, it will be an ample coherence and will be a workable coherence. And it will work furthermore according to the canons of those who contributed and shared their opinions in making it. My understanding was when they talk about errors, it doesn't talk about error, but it's an outcome that the expert himself would not recognize. You can often get that. I mean, it may happen that when you construct a mesh, you, uh, it's all perfectly okay, and you will be exhibited what it does, and in that sense you might, of course, disallow it, or, or render parts. You can't actually expunge it, you can't expurgate it literally. You can make bits of it inaccessible by shoving them, shoving them in some other universe where they are past hypotheses. They represent past hypotheses, or hypotheses considered and rejected, and are not directly accessible. So. You can't get rid of them any more than you when you say, "Oh Lord, I am wrong about this." You actually haven't taken the hypothesis of thought you said you were wrong about and destroyed it. You put it away in an inaccessible part of the head, and it isn't accessed as being one of the sensible things you think of when you you are thinking about the subject of, of which the mistake in you know, in your sense mistake, in my sense, mistake as a thinker, mistake applied. You wouldn't bring to mind this particular possibility, this particular hypothesis, unless you say, I want to remember what I got wrong before. Why, for example, because I want to learn from mistakes. I made a boob of this kind once, well, I'm going to apply a different situation and make an analogy out of it, because this business of refining similarities and this connective of uh, 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 which becomes an analogy when you say, you know, it's just not an ambiguity, it's a necker cube, is a very powerful tool and leads to many kinds of inference. And the basic mode of reasoning, in fact, if you like, in this sort of thing is a, well, sorry, the basic mode is too pompous. One of the basic modes is a reasoning by analogy, which is allowed in the great majority of, of systems, even expert systems, Though they accommodate it tacitly. And the reason it's allowed is the other reason I gave on the top. Um, 
of that board, the first sheet of that board, when I only, instead of going to have a lot of spiel about Turing and um, Post and Gödel and so on, I only pointed out uh, a thing called Operation Order. And there's a very beautiful case where uh, Ross Ashby, some years ago, pointed out that a computing machine had an algebra such that it consisted in either a string with knots tied in it, or maybe looping back on itself like a clock dial, where causality and temporality, process, operation, were represented in this fashion, where the operations could be obtained by taking their inverse and then taking the, sorry, the transform, their transform, then the inverse transform, mapping them back onto the line. So mapping them off the line and back onto the line. Now, expert systems are, some of them at any rate, clobbered by, most of them, clobbered by this restriction. And for that reason, you have grave difficulty with some of them. Uh, that restriction is not an inherent part of this kind of uh, representation. Uh, the, it is indeed unfoldable and, and hence is directionally ordered. But the directionality is not nearly so strict, nor is it either serial or, as an alternative to serial, fully synchronized uh, parallel, like an array processor. It is a, an operation which has values co-currency as well as simultaneity and before and after. And the co-currents relations usually are very complex and dominant. And this applies particularly when you're thinking about executing those pieces or possible strategies uh, or, or several of them together. I mean, this appears to, you know, uh, I'm sorry, it's just the way the world is made and the way that computers aren't made. Uh, and and uh, buildings are built on a building site with a whole load of contractors going around at once and bumping into each other and coming into conflict with each other and resolving conflict. And uh, however well unionized it is, this still works. I mean, you know, it, 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 there is, a, the whole thing goes on, you're building a ship, the same happens. Um, when you think, the same happens. And, in fact, a great deal of the innovation and inventiveness is generated by looking at more than one point of view at once. Uh, as, for example, it's quite illuminating to take either more than one mesh or more than one universe with a mesh, rather, or to take a structure like my gumbo structure up here, wherever it's got to. and say, look simultaneously at those points, compare and contrast what you get. This is, and then construct an analogy between them. It's even more illuminating if you had looked, if you deleted um, the relation called so They had a couple of separate meshes. and tore it evaporated. And you looked at, say, pi and q simultaneously, compared and contrasted, or as many as you like. This is one dominant mode of, uh, of inference and suggestion. Now, what I'm going to show you here, if I may, are some input statements to that system as they were more or less as they were drawn on the picture. And um, they're called in these, which are extracted, in fact, from the RI report, they are called entailment meshes, but it's very carefully noted in the report that the, they are, in fact, entailment meshes pruned under one point of view, and they're legitimate statements when you enclose the various topics within boundaries of the notation I've used already. In fact, the authors did that. Uh, and uh, this process was gone through when they, they were authoring them. 
So although they're called entailment measures, um, they obviously aren't, according to the strict sense in which I uh, put it, uh, I use the word, what I've done is to take, in fact, the author's statements and then do uh, pruning from some top topic which is of interest in mission or something.